I decided that I would wait until I came up with a good idea for a private detective. Then I came up with this uh, genetic hermaphroditic chimera, and I thought, yeah, that's good enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I usually just uh, uh, read a passage, and um, you know, and then I, I, I will take questions from you. But um, today is special, and not because of my jet lag. Today is special <laughs> because uh, 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 it so happens that. Uh, the actress who uh, read the audio version of this book, January Jones, is Jennifer Lavoie. Don't get them too excited. Lavoie! Yeah. Jones! Oh my god! <laughs> Who's Jennifer Jones? People do that all the time. She's the one from Mad Men. There are two, there are two January actresses. It's okay. Cool. I sing one I'm so sorry. Excited. I'm so sorry. Don't no, don't be. January Lavoie uh, <laughs> is here with us, and uh, I would like her, uh, to join me and read the Kimberlian parts, if you please. Nice. I'd love to. Please come. <laughs> So we haven't rehearsed this, so no, not at all. <laughs> totally impromptu. <laughs> so we'll do our best. Um, yeah. So. Okay. You follow my notes? Yeah, I think so. So you said. What did you get? Did you just come here? Okay. And and brown is. Uh, Adrian. Brown is Adrian, and green, green is Zoe. Okay. Great. Okay. Good. Yeah. This is not in your books. This is about my notes. <laughs> <laughs> you never know who's who. <laughs> so I'm starting here. Uh, yeah, no, uh, I start with the uh, narrator and I think it's okay. okay. Interior, AZ Kimbrian's office, dusk. An orange sky peeked through the blinds, along with the sound of waste boats and seagulls heading home for the night. Kimbrian moved the White King's bishop to H5. So, someone's murdering Victor Lyon's sons. An efficient assassin, who also has personal issues. And who signs with a red flower, but is not with the red mums clan. <laughs> they completed a half orbit around the chessboard and peeped back at the dying day through the broken window. Close up, skin pores south of mascarade eyes, yawn at the western sun. Who is it? Kimbrian trilled on their feet, nudged a black bone to E3, then drifted toward the desk to gulp down a mouthful of bourbon straight from the bottle. Victor Lyon? The U turned back to the chessboard. Too old, too tall, too heavy to attach to his children, and to his cartel, and to his cane. Just shut up. White bishop to G6. And if you can spare a moment, try and stop that bishop that's wreaking havoc in your rear guard. No rush. Fix their hat off, rubs their hair like a golden retriever lifting fleece. I don't know why I keep playing you. Chess is a game of logic. You're incapable of rational thought. Black knot to D4. Steps on the stairway. A furtive smile slithers across their face. It's not a game of logic, it's a game of wit. And I'm witty as fuck. I'm a <laughs> queer Oscar Wilde. And you play me because you have no one else to play. Someone knocked on the door. A wavy silhouette had crystallized in the glass panel. Hello? AZ watch, oh sorry. <laughs> AZ watched the door open a crack and the femme fatale peep inside, a flame of Irish hair fending off the shadows. <coughs> Did you ever turn the lights on? She wondered. Never. It's sexier this way. She stepped in, for some reason ignoring the broken glass swept into a corner <laughs> and the bullet acne on the walls. <laughs> she was wearing a who cares about her clothes. These are just padding words meant to highlight her awkwardness. <laughs> she breathed in as deeply as her corset allowed, incidentally appreciating the booze and sweat aroma of the Kimber cane. Have you made any progress with my case? The man who spies on me in my bedroom from the Rose Garden Yes! Of course not. Give it a folded her arms. I haven't given it a thought since you last left this room. Okay, she said, surprisingly not surprised by that answer. Then, about the money I paid in advance... Yes, you can give me the rest in a check, if you wish. The woman froze once more, <laughs> as disoriented as she should have grown accustomed to be. No, 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 wait, wait, kidding, kidding, kidding! She exclaimed, stepping forward as the femme stepped back. Hands talking at twice the speed of her mouth. It's a complex case. Could take me a few days. I should go to your house and comb your bedroom. Might as well go tonight. We could grab something for dinner. It was your maid. <laughs> <laughs> Zoe face palm. 
the fam needed a little more time to react, having to separate all the rambling from the actual mystery solution at the end. <laughs> and once that sank in, she responded with only two words, poorly chosen. What? My. Adrian rose up from their palm. Okay, here's what happened. Yesterday when you visited, you had a little yellow-brown stain on the neck of your dress. It was iodine, very characteristic. The previous night, your maid was stalking you, hidden in the rose bushes. You noticed, screamed, she ran away, and scraped her fingers on the thorns. The next morning, while helping you lop that necklace you were wearing, she stained your dress with a disinfectant on her fingertips. A blank collapse followed, perhaps a couple seconds longer than what it had taken Adrian to deliver the exposition. The family was simply left to inquire. If you knew all this from my first visit, why didn't you tell me then? The green eye glinted, incapable of lying. I wanted to see you again. <laughs> the fan pulled out a checkbook from her purse, scrolled a few lines, ripped out the check, shoved it into the extended hand opposite, and walked out. Zoe monitored the action, pouting like an abandoned dog. She remained silent after the fan left, listening to the heels fading out down the stairway for good. Slowly over Zoe's face was cast first a saddened frown, then a threatening snarl. You asshole! She said, crumpling the check into a ball and throwing it to the floor. I really liked her! She was special! She wasn't special. What are you babbling about? She was literally the first woman to knock on that door. <laughs> and she was a terrible femme fatale. <laughs> they retrieved the check and hand ironed it on the table. If that's all it takes for you to fall in love, you can just as well wait for the next person. Well, not the next person, because we have to alternate femme fatales with teeth pummeling thugs. But just wait for the femme fatale after the next thug. <laughs> they were walking toward the living area when they suddenly froze halfway, retraced their steps, exited the office through the open door, and stopped on the landing. Then they re-entered the office. And then Zoe threw a left to their face. There was a fraction of a second, an aesthetically perfect photo still, during which their feet were off the floor. Their eyes were shut down by the punches shockwave rippling through the face, and Kimrian, detached from the material world, cruising through the ether after a few drops of saliva that flew, fast, that flew faster than the body by virtue of the lower mass, was pure Kimrian, with no other sensory stimulus than self-inflicted pain, 100% idealism, perfect poetry. And then they landed on the floor like a passed out buffalo. <laughs> Immediately, one arm locked its opposite, and a leg curled around the other leg, and five fingernails dug into the other side's side. You selfish douche! I wanted to see her! Why do you always push them away? Why? Outside, seagulls and rooftops stared bemusedly at the sight of a human worm writhing on the floor of its office, trying to punch itself again, <laughs> dodging its own fist, <laughs> and smashing its knuckles on the floorboards. Some seagulls hollered at that. Gah! I push them away! I push them away, you demented goat! They stumbled up, pussy motoring toward their desk. Where are you going? Wh She didn't have a chance. Adrian yanked open the desk, grabbed the case with their medicine, and spread the contents over the table. The left hand tried to slap the needles off the desk, but the right one saved one just in time. He drove it to the mouth and capped it with their teeth and stabbed it into the left biceps like a wooden stake into Christopher Lee's chest. Two heartbeats were enough to carry the drag wave toward the skull and have it break against the brain like a typhoon and an aircraft carrier, flushing the crew off the deck. There was, <clears throat> there was no other metaphor they both could agree on. For Adrian, it was like wings sprouting off out of his spine, like the ropes snapping apart between rival ships in the maelstrom in the third Pirates of the Caribbean movie, like two white hands grasping each other and their fingers loosening and then slipping away until the fingertips just kiss each other goodbye, and Zoe gets lost in the quietly violent current toward the calm after the storm. And Adrian, temporarily weakened, accepting the physical pain for the sign of victory it is, listens to the seagulls and the waste boats outside, and peacefully drops to the floor. Finally, I